to this new work week. I hope and pray that you had a great weekend. I know that we did and had a wonderful service yesterday uh, talking some difficult stuff in relationship to a church that was dying and was actually dead. And so uh, it's so great to know that God is a God of mercy and a God of resurrection. And so no matter what you face in life, no matter where you stumble in life, God is there to pick you up and help you get back up on your feet. With that said, I want to speak to you today as you start your work week about obedience. Now, in, in our text today, it's found in John 14, 21, and it says this, whoever, Jesus speaking here, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. He's saying, whoever has my commands keeps and loves me. You know, now, is Jesus saying that we have to earn God's love by being good? The short answer, of course, is no. But let's take a close, closer look and see if we can understand what Jesus is really talking about here. Remember that in studying God's word, it's always important for you and me and everyone to study scripture in light of other scripture. Ephesians 8, uh, 2, 8, 9 says this, that um, by grace you have been saved through faith and not that of yourself. So there's no doubt that we are saved by faith alone, not by our works, right? But there is also no doubt that we demonstrate that faith in how we live and how we walk obedient to God. 
for it says in James, in the same way faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So think about it this way. As a devoted parent, you love your children no matter what, right? If they disobey or make poor decisions, you still love them, right? But when that child consistently obeys you and takes your word and direction to heart, that means so much more, right? Why? Because the child is really saying this, I trust you enough to do what you are asking me to do. It's the same way with God. God loves all of us even when we ignore his word and choose to live outside of his, his will for our life. He loves us despite ourselves, right? But walking in obedience to God's will and word, well, God loves that so much more that he actually makes you more blessable. When you live your life according to God and his word, you become blessable. Now, think about it this way. When your child is being obedient and doing all the right things and they're getting good grades and they're doing all their chores and they're being kind to people and respectful to you, what is your typical reaction? You want to reward them, right? You actually want to even surprise them with some reward, right? Well, isn't it the same thing with God but so much greater? Here's the important thing that we need to realize that how do you, or how are you obedient to God if you don't know what it is to be obedient? That's why you hear pastor all the time. I'm always telling people, study your word, study your word. And I know sometimes people get uh, a little over uh, tired maybe of pastor always saying, study your word. And you've heard me talk many times about one of the greatest problems in the American church is biblical illiteracy. But think about this. If you and I are called to love God and obey his commands and we don't study God's word, then how do you expect to know what to obey and what to not do in your life, right? This is the key. It's like, how can you be mad at your children if they don't know what to do or not to do? Right? You can't be mad at them if you don't tell them what to do or not to do. It's the same thing with God and His Word. God and His commands. If you don't study God's Word, how do you know what to obey and what not to do in life? Right? That's why it's so important for us to, to study God's Word and, and allow it to become part of our life. You know, you can't expect... You, to get mad because your children do something that you didn't want them to do if you didn't tell them not to do it, right? See, God has given us his word. And this word is to not only show us who he is and to explain how much he loves us, but he's also telling us how to be blessable, how, how to live in this fear of influence with him so that he can bless you, not only for your own personal life, but that you could be a blessing to other people's life. Do you know when you're blessed, when you're being blessed by God, your, your family's gonna be blessed? Do you know your marriage is gonna be blessed? Do you know your relationships will be blessed? If you learn to put God's word into practice into your life, you will be a blessed person. And to be a blessed person means you have to obey his word, right? But don't get this, don't miss this. God's love is not determined by your actions, whether it's good or bad. It's when you live and walk in his obedience that you demonstrate your faith, that you're really trusting him and you're showing him how much you truly do love him because God loves you with an everlasting love. So take this, start your work week, put into practice starting today, get in your word, let the word speak to your life, Learn what God wants you to do and not do. And because of your love and your understanding of what he's done for your life, begin to be obedient to his word and watch and see how God blesses your life in such a tremendous way. Do you know sometimes just being obedient to God's word will give you rest and peace? If any of us ever needed rest and peace right now, it is right now, right? Right now we start the whole the whole fiasco and circus, if you will, of putting in uh, the new Supreme Court. I was watching a little of it this morning. And, and you know, it's it just one of those things. That there's so much division in our world today. Well, I believe that the Church of Jesus Christ 
needs to find rest and peace in this moment. And the way we do it, and partly the way we do it, is to study God's word and be obedient to God's word in our lives. So not only will we be blessed, but our children will be blessed, our relationships will be blessed, our coworkers will be blessed, everyone around us will be blessed. You will be blessed because you obey God in his word. Amen? Let me pray for you this day. Father, I thank you, Lord God, as we start this new work week. Father, we praise you and thank you for your word that gives us an understanding of who you are, the deeper things of life, and the things that will hinder us in our life, Father. So often, even as our children disobey us, they suffer the consequences of their decision and poor, uh, dis their poor decision making. But Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would help us as individual believers to begin to put into practice what you've given us. Lord God, not to rain on our parade or keep us from having fun, but to really protect us so that we could truly experience peace and rest, Lord God. Father, I pray this each one starts their week, Lord God, whether they're going to their job, school, uh, at home, Father, whatever this week holds, Lord God, I pray that they would turn to you and trust you and your word, Father, that they could walk in obedience and they would reap the benefits of walking obedient of their heavenly Father. Lord God, I pray, continue to be with your people. Keep them safe today, wherever their travels take them, God. Give them travel and mercies and bless them, Lord God. I pray, bless them. You said who you bless, I will bless. And so, Lord, I bless them today. Give them a great day, I pray. And give them a fresh uh, understanding of what it means to walk in obedience to you. Bless them, Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day today. What a beautiful morning. The heat's on. And so it's going to be a hot week. Let's continue to pray that this is the week that tomorrow we'll get the notification that we can move back into our church. Amen. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day today. Love you.